Hi, uh, good morning guys, thanks for joining me. What I'd like to do in today's video is talk about a little interesting saw which you come across at the Bushcraft Show. For those of you that may be in the market for a cheap and expensive lightweight saw, this may be a good option for you. So the main reason for purchasing this saw in the first place was A, just to see if it was any good, and B, you know, I'm always looking for a lightweight option. I have been looking at the Sven saws, but you know, you're talking 40, 50 pound where you can have to pick these up from anywhere between 10 and 20. I had to pay 10 pound for this from the Bushcraft show, like I mentioned. You know, I'm looking at them at the demo, you know, they did seem quite good. I'm not too concerned about the blade itself, if that's, uh, you know, a little bit crappy, that can be replaced at any time. You know, just as long as that framework sturdy, that's the main thing that I'm looking for. And again, you know, that nice small size means you can actually be just packed away in the other sack, or perhaps just a small pocket, you know, of your rucksack. You know, something where the little bow saw may not fit, but that saw there is going to give you the same kind of cutting capability. So just taking a quick look of how the saw actually comes, this is obviously how it is when it's packed away and stored. Made in Germany by a company called MFH and, uh, you know, very lightweight. 16 and a quarter inches and it weighs 400 grams. And then it's contained in the handles here, which makes a tube of one inch. Very easy to operate, we're just going to undo one of the ends here. And this is where all the components are stored. There's one of the handles, the main piece, which is going to go across the centre. And the blade itself, and there's actually you know, a little bit more room in the tube there if you want you just to store another blade. That's something which you will do. I also uh, get a dry wood blade, and perhaps, you know, like I mentioned, this, this blade itself isn't very good. I perhaps just replace this. The overall length of that blade is actually 13 and a half inches, seems to have a weird size. I'm not sure if these guys, you know, actually do sell, you know, replacement blades. But it's no big deal. You could actually get a saw blade, you know, just a little bit longer, and then you could actually just put a bolt in it and, uh, you know, use it just where them little rivets are, and it should be fine. So when it actually comes to constructing the saw, it's very simple. All you've actually got to make sure that you do, just on the handle section here, it just makes sure that the little slits are at the bottom and just on the inside, because that's how you're going to actually just attach the blade to it. So all you've got to do here, you've just got a couple of uh, holes which just run just at the top end here. And we're just going to use the bigger holes, obviously, just to put the centre main piece in. And again, just making sure that that slit is at the bottom and just on the inside. And then what I like to do is I just get uh, the main fastening bar and just run that straight through there. Just start holding hold everything together. And then just using the other little knurled part, which has got the thread on it. So I just start just by tightening it up slightly. You know, I'm not going to tighten it up too tight until the blade's actually in. And it's just a case of just actually locating the blade in. If it is, it isn't fitting, you can just actually just back that off just a little bit until the blade's actually in. And then just tightening both ends up, just so nice and evenly, just trying to keep that frame as straight as possible. And it's simple as that. There's the little books all ready to go. Once everything's constructed and tightened up, you know, you're happy with the shape of it, everything's square. Just giving the frame a quick twist, you know, there's very little torque in there, you know, so the frame itself is quite sturdy. The size of it for a buck saw, you know, is quite small. You know, it's probably one of the smallest ones I've seen. You know, but it is running very similar to the 12-inch bow saw. The blade length, just a little bit longer. It's a 13-inch blade as opposed to a 12-inch blade. But the diameter of the wood that you'd be able to cut through, you know, is pretty much similar, around about four, four and a half inches. So again, this could be used exactly the same kind of things what you'd use with your silky pocket boy or your backhoe lapwander. And it will help, you know, just chopping down a little bit, uh, big, bigger pieces of wood. One advantage over the, uh, the Stanley bow saw, which you can see straight away, is if you ever need to wear a glove. Now, you know, I do like these Stanley bow saws and the fact that they are rugged and they are hard wearing. But the thing as well I don't like about them are the hand guards which come with them. Okay, you're going to stop you from banging your hand, you know, but in the winter time, it's hard to wear a leather glove and actually get to fit through there. So just showing you what I mean with the standard leather work glove, you know, which I do tend to carry a lot of the time. It's not so bad actually on the uh, on the 12-inch bow saw, you know, there's a little bit of movement in there and I can actually get my hand through quite easily. But for some strange reason on the 24-inch bow saw, that's actually too tight to actually get my hand through just wearing a leather glove, you know, so in cold weather, you know, when things are wet, you know, and you're dealing with a lot of wet wood, you know, that's, uh, you know, it's quite uncomfortable, you know, so I would like to wear a glove. But just, uh, just looking at this little book saw, you know, there's a bit more room there for your hand to go and there's obviously a few more positions which you'd actually hold the saw in. You know, so if it says that you want to wear a thick leather glove, you know, that would fit quite easily. You can obviously have the hand on the other side, you could use it single handed because it's not overly big. And again, you can actually just put your thumb on top or your finger in there, you know. So there's various different ways in which you can hold it. And that's something we're just going to look at now and just test it on a little bit of wood. Just so I was making my way across just to look for a little bit of wood just to cut, I've actually come across all this birch bark and actually it's quite interesting. Just looking here it looks like a squirrel has actually been trimming, you know, and chewing all this inner bark and just ripping all this birch bark down for us. So that's a resource which you can actually pack away. 
you know this is why you know we do shoot a lot of these squirrels purely for the fact that they do damage you know an arm and kill a lot of these trees so we're going to take advantage of this we're going to process this down at some point what i'm going to do just pick it all up just put it in my tinder pouch we can actually carry that you know and use for a future date there's a bit more of this birch bark in i've just noticed just on the other trees there you know looks like he's been busy you know and damaging those as well i'm going to just actually get the camera you know to see if we can actually see some of the damage which they do I'm sure the camera will be able to pick it up because of the of the sunlight. But you know, all that uh, all that branch there has been stripped off. And all that branch there has also been stripped off. You know, so it's for cute, you know, and as nice looking as what these animals are, they do actually cause, you know, quite a bit of damage. And that's one of the reasons why, you know, we do try and take them out, you know, if they are causing trouble like this down in the woodlands. So what we got here is a piece of down pine, you know, not very thick, it's around about two inches in diameter. This is one of the reasons why, you know, we always carry a leather glove, you know, certainly in the woodlands in Britain. You know, brambles, you know, can have absolute nightmare. You know, they jag in your fingers, they get stuck in your trousers. And it's one of the reasons why, you know, a couple of people have asked about the trousers which you wear. These are basically car artwork pants, I think these are the, uh, either the lumberjack pants or something similar to that. And it's basically got four layers, you know, very thick canvas. And it does actually stop quite a few of these brambles, you know, going into your legs as it is that you're walking through the woodlands. So again, you know, not very thick, you know, two inch piece of pine, so, you know, it says uh, quite dry by the looks of it. So we're just going to test this all now, just actually see how it cuts, you know, and just how easy it is. So after a few minutes worth of work there, we've had to go ourselves just a little pile of firewood here, just split it down with an axe and we could take it from there. If these were longer lengths, you could actually use this for shelters, so you know, shelter building, fire processing, that kind of thing, you know, this saw would do. Again, you could actually use your pocket boy or, you know, your back of that one if that was the case to be. Chopping through there, you know, won't be so much of an issue. This is the kind of thing I've used these kind of saws for for a number of years. But again, I think, you know, if you're going to use it on bigger diameter wood, this would perhaps just be a little bit more quicker, a little bit more less fatigue on the end than actually just using something like your pocket boy. And again, down to cost, you know, this has only cost me £10, where, you know, your pocket boys and your back of Laplanders, you know, anywhere between £20 and £40. Just taking a quick look at the saw here, everything's still fine, you know, everything's still square. The little tightening up uh, knobs on the ends here, you know, never came loose. So, you know, not too bad. The wood which we had to cut through, you know, there was no big deal in cutting that. Any kind of saw, or perhaps I'd expect to cut through that. The blade itself held up quite well. Again, you know, no big deal, there wasn't much work to be done. But it's just a case of really just coming out, just testing it, just seeing what it's like. And probably just showing you really what you can actually get, you know, for such a cheap price. And there she is disassembled and ready to be stored. Now one thing which I didn't like about the saw is that rattling sound which it makes as the centre bar moves up and down inside it. If that was a problem, you could actually just put a little bit of foam inside there, that'll stop that noise. If that little bit of space just inside is going to mean you can put a replacement blade in there, whether that's another green wood blade or what I'm going to do is actually just get a dry wood blade. You know, these kind of things like weight, and that's what I was looking for. And certainly, you know, the size of it is perfect. But when you do pay these cheap prices, you know, I'll probably fall flat on my face at some point. But, you know, as long as this frame's sturdy enough, like I say, you know, I'm not about that bothered about the blade. I could just get a replacement blade as and when needed. So where do I think this sword will fit in my kit? You know, alongside all the other swords which I've got on what I use. You know, this is going to be perfect to fit in my fishing kit or also my hunting kit, certainly early season or just before we start guiding clients out on the rivers again. You know, any kind of little bit of bank maintenance which may be doing overhanging trees over the rivers, that kind of thing, but also clearing paths, you know, this could be perfect for. 
And again, you know, putting it in my shooting kit for making blinds and hides and the likes, you know, it would probably cover that as well. You know, guys, so for 10 quid, you know, you can't expect to, the world. Like I mentioned, you can actually pick these up on Amazon and eBay. You know, anywhere, you know, I've actually seen people selling them for around about £45, so just be aware, you know, you can actually get them, you know, like I've paid here, £10. But the average price on them is around about £15, £20. So like always, guys, I'll just even say thanks a lot for you stopping by and watching the video, like always. Until next time, you take care, and I'll see you again.